I am one of a chain of people that I am pretty sure you can date back to about 1225 in terms of the care of some of our collections. And all we've done is get the stuff, look after it, do the best we can and hand it on to someone else in the future. I'm Gary Brannan, I am Keeper of Archives and Special Collections. We're in the Borswick Institute for Archives at the University of York, which is the archives here at the university. We have a very broad range of material here at the Borthwick. The earliest document we hold is 11th century, uh, right the way through to the present day. And our collection is always growing. It's very hard to categorise because new things arrive all the time. Any archivist will tell you there's no such thing as a normal day. It's a variety of things. Could be bringing in new collections, facilitating access to researchers, looking at online development, or reading something from the 14th century to help someone else understand it, and many more things in between. What we do is we facilitate access to the information about us and who we are as people. And that's who we were in the past, that informs who we are now, that might give us ideas about who we can be in the future. We preserve the stuff to make it available in the future. And more than anything else, it's allowing researchers to come in and provide them the platform to do brilliant and amazing things with what they do with our archives and our care. Because that's the key part. We could put this you know, underground and it would survive really, really well. The key thing here in archives is that access to it. If that's in the room, actually looking at the, at the material on site, or if that's looking at it digitally, but it's making sure that access is available in the best possible means. Researchers come from many, many backgrounds. So it can be anyone from a senior researcher at an international institution, through to undergrads and postgrads doing their own research, through to people just off the street that are interested in their own local area and are curious. We have a very large international user community that, that's in the tens of thousands. Many of those people, we're never going to see them in person. So well, that will be about providing access to material digitally. So there's a huge, broad user community that we both see in person and who we're only going to ever see virtually through inquiries or phone calls or tweets or anything like that. It's obviously a team effort. It's not just myself. The very experienced and talented team here, from archive assistants who people might meet on their visit to us, to digitization professionals, to conservation professionals who do the really in-depth and detailed work on conserving and preserving the records. There's nothing nicer when you find that something that you've brought in or cared for or provided access to or your team has provided access to has informed major works. I think that's brilliant. But that's anything from someone publishing a major book on a major political figure or a major political event through to someone just finding out about them, about their family, about something in their past that deeply affects them personally. All these things are a hugely rewarding element of being part of that research ecosystem. The reason Arts and Humanities is important is that it's looking at the really big questions, I think, about who we are as people, about why we believe what we believe, about how we think what we think, and also that journey about how we got to that point, how we might be different in the future. So it's huge, big questions. And that's all informed by curiosity, and that's really what we're here for.